In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. What a beautiful day to be indoors. And we are so blessed to be able to be indoors, considering what's happened down south in our country. So we thank God for that blessing and for all the blessings that we've received as we turn to Him for His love, His mercy, and His forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife 
and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision clearly upon the tablets, so that one can read it readily, for the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are his people. He shepherds the flocks he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you who would say to your servant, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat? Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished." Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, We are unprofitable servants. 
We have done what we were obliged to do. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Martha was a very devout Catholic woman in her early 60s. And for most of her life, she desired to go to visit the holy places in Rome. But Martha was terrified of flying. She realized that she was not getting any younger, and if she was ever going to make that trip to Rome, she had best do it as soon as possible. So she summoned up her courage, and she bought her airline ticket. When she walked on the plane, she was wearing her largest cross as prevention against any disaster. And as she took her seat, she noticed a few rows back, there were four bishops on the plane, obviously going to some meeting over in Rome. This made Martha feel a little better. The flight started uneventfully, but after dinner there was this jolt, and Martha looked out the window to see one of the four engines fall off the plane and descend into the clouds below. She sounded the alarm. We are going to die. The captain came over the PA system and assured everyone that yes, we had lost one of our engines, but he was very confident that they could complete the flight and land safely in Rome with three engines. Well, that didn't really comfort Martha that much. She continued to yell out, we're going to die. The stewardess came over to calm her down and noticed the cross that she was wearing, so she thought she would take a religious approach. Madam, she said, please relax. God is with us. We do not need to fear. Besides, we still have three engines. And look, we have four bishops on the plane. Martha responded, I'd rather have four engines and three bishops on the plane. (laughs) You know, given our choice, I think all of us would prefer certainty over faith. We would like to have something that we know for sure, something that we can see and touch, rather than trusting that somehow God will provide. Faith is difficult. Yes, it is. And that's why the disciples in today's gospel ask Jesus, increase our faith. And Jesus answers, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to that mulberry tree, be cast into the sea and it would obey you. Now this must have been a favorite answer of Jesus because there is a version in another gospel that says if you had faith the size of a mustard seed you could say to that mountain be cast into the sea and it would obey you. Now despite Jesus's attraction to this answer it is not very clear what he's saying. What does it mean to have faith the size of a mustard seed? Does it mean having just a little bit of faith? Well, the disciples already had faith the size of a mustard seed. So why were there not mulberry trees and mountains flying all over the place? There must be another meaning to the mustard seed faith. Perhaps Jesus is pointing to a faith the size of a mustard seed because he wants to contrast it with another kind of faith. Perhaps he associates the mustard seed with a little bit of faith that's required to believe in the dramatic changes in our lives, things as obvious as flying mulberry trees. Perhaps he points to the mustard seed size faith to call us to a deeper and to a simpler faith. I mean, we all prefer the dramatic. 
How wonderful it would be if we asked God for something and found out that it was immediately given to us. If we were unemployed and prayed for a job and the phone immediately rang and there was a job offer, that would be amazing. If we were fighting with a deadly cancer, prayed for a healing, how great would it be to go to the next medical exam and find out we're cancer-free? Wow, a miracle. These would all be wonderful, dramatic changes in our circumstances. And now don't get me wrong, I think that there are times when faith does operate this way, when people's circumstances are dramatically changed. I've seen such marvels, and I know that they are real. But the majority of the time, a different and deeper faith is necessary. Usually, when we ask for something, things don't dramatically change. Mulberry trees don't go flying around. Phones don't ring. And that's why I think Jesus is directing us to a different kind of faith. A faith that's more subtle, but every bit is real. What if you were looking for a job and did not immediately find one, but somehow you received the grace to avoid discouragement and increase thankfulness for the enjoyment of your family? What if you didn't receive a rapid cure for cancer, but you found the courage to endure the treatments, to avoid the bitterness, and discover a sense of peace, even in the face of death? Now this kind of faith is not dramatic. It does not flip nature on its head. It does not send mulberry trees flying into the ocean but it is the necessary faith on which we survive from day to day. Dramatic miracles, yes, they can happen. But this deeper faith must happen if we are going to live a full and rewarding life. And that's why Jesus ties the little faith of the mustard seed to the dramatic and to the unexpected. He wants to remind us that there is another kind of faith where what changes is not our circumstances, but ourselves. Faith can move mountains, but it can also move our hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Amen. And now let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our God who knows our joys, our hopes, and our fears, let us bring our needs and our prayers before Him. For the church, drawn from all nations, cultures, and languages, may she grow in holiness and charity through the grace of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all in civil power and authority, may God inspire their leadership in bringing peace to our world and justice to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, may Christ, the divine physician, bring his healing touch to their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community of St. Michael, May the Holy Spirit be our guide in continuing to grow in the virtues of faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those whose lives have been affected by the recent hurricane, that God will watch over them as they rebuild and watch over those first responders. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Dr. Pete DuPont, for whom this Mass is celebrated. May they take their place at the eternal feast in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are or will be celebrating birthdays or anniversaries this week, let us pray to the Lord. And for all those who have asked for our prayers, those we have promised to pray for this morning, And those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, And now we pause to add our own intentions in silence. And for all these prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers that we have just voiced and those prayers that we do hold in the silence of our hearts. And grant all things according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May we Lord such sacrifice in your hands, with the grace of the Lord Jesus, for our good and good Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, 
graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Michael, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now let us pray together in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Thank you. Our second collection this morning is for capital improvements. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The and may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And may God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 And may God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 And may God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 And God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Did you say two? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I know that the junk in the trunk was canceled yesterday because of the weather, so I know there's a lot of people that have a lot of junk in their trunk waiting to get rid of it. I know they're going to reset the date, but I don't know what it is, so I'll either tell you next weekend or they'll send an email out to everyone that uh, bought spaces to let them know next weekend looks pretty good right now uh, on the uh, Weather Channel, but we'll see. Also, I hope you're getting your questions ready on October the 16th. We are going to have our first inquire session. Doesn't mean you have to commit to anything with the right of Christian initiation of adults. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But it's an opportunity for you to say, you know, I've always wanted to ask a priest this question. Here I am, October 16th, after this Mass. We also have a teacher's meeting and students uh, right after Mass. Donuts are in the parish hall, and we will be meeting on this end of the parish hall beginning around 10 o'clock or so. The Lord be with you. And And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.